Good afternoon. Welcome to episode number 512. And the topic today is how to win in your relationship arguments. Ooh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> Before I jump into that, let me introduce myself and get started the whole way properly, which is, hi, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I hope strong, successful women attract... Excuse me, I keep... Yes. <laughs> I've been rewriting my script, so I get some confused. I help strong, successful women <laughs> attract amazing relationships and find balance and love life and business. I'm rewriting some stuff so it comes out differently than it used to and it threw me for a loop. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day for the last couple of years, I've done these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is going to be a doozy. <laughs> but not because of what you think it's going to be. So, um, as I said, I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today we're at number 512. You hit 500 a couple of weeks ago. So this is uh, an ongoing series. It doesn't seem to have an end yet because there's always, funnily enough, there's always stuff to talk about when it comes to relationships. So today's topic is how to win your relationship arguments. Yeah, that's going to be fun, isn't it? But I want to speak to you from a couple of different angles because, first of all, I want to make sure you get the insight about maybe why you argue. Two, the benefits, and three, the prices. May not be in that order, we'll see how it goes. All right, let's dive in, shall we? Um, first of all, let me play, put this on the table, and this may be an obvious one at the beginning, but I'm gonna explain it more as I break it down. But if you're having arguments in relationships, you may not be doing your relationship very well. I'll say that one again. If you're having arguments in your relationships, especially if you're having lots of arguments in your relationships, you may not be doing your relationship very well, except for a caveat. So I'm drop some things in there to make it make some sense. If you're watching any of my broadcasts for the last 500 and plus broadcasts, you probably have heard me talk about our um, imprinted history, uh, that, that um, program you would get when we're kids. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, okay, I'm gonna do that way, all right, yeah. So let me speak from the other side of it, from my own personal experience before I talk about maybe what your, maybe your experience. So, taking arguments out of the context of a good or bad thing, because I want to talk about, in relation, talk about how arguments can happen in relationships in more than one way. So, I've shared before about my own story, about my upbringing, and the fact that when I was in my, um, basically when I was in my teens and 20s in my dating life, early dating life, because I'm a bit older than 20 now, <laughs> in my dating life, I would have these experiences of relationship that would last a few months, always in great fun, joy, depth, connection, and everything else. And early on, there wasn't any sex, because I started a bit later. That's another story entirely, which I'm not going to talk about it here. But they would always end with an argument. Every time it's an argument, I'd quit and leave. Like, every relationship would end that way. And looking at my own history as a child, the wiring and understanding what happened, I looked back and saw very clearly that when I was a child, my memory of my parents together was they would never argue. And I took on a belief because of the way they acted together, which sounds so wonderful, but it was a price to pay as well. But the experience was, my parents never argued in front of the kids as far as I remember. Now, again, memory, not necessarily what they did, but it was what was filed away inside. So I had this belief that arguing and relationships don't go together at all, period. So it wasn't about that you had to get out of them. I mean, that was the thing. I had no skills either. That's the, that's the thing. But I had the belief that arguments and relationship didn't go together. That means when a relationship happened, That'd be great, but if an argument happened, that'd be the end of the relationship, period, because they didn't go together. Sounds kind of silly in a way, but it's the truth about how we take on programming that affects our relationships as an adult from when we're very young. Another part of that was, is that being a child of a family where arguments weren't very common, I had no skills. I didn't have any tools or ability to handle an argument without basically either shutting down or walking away, because I didn't have any other way of relating to an argument. And at times nowadays, the temptation is still in me. Even though I've done a lot of work since then, the temptation to do that is still there because it's a childhood programming that's still running to a degree. So let's talk about you now, shall we? <laughs> if you look back at your own life, dating life and experiences relationships, foregoing arguments for the moment, I've said this before to you, you may have not watched my broadcast when I said this, but I trust you'll say this to heart right now. Are you aware that there are things you do in your adult relationship life, that choices you make, the partners you choose, the experiences you have with them, that some have, have a mirror, mirror corollary, 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 corollary. <laughs> that word always messes me up, 
but they have a mirror perspective on when you were a child, meaning that other things happen when you're an adult in your adult relationships that look the same, feel the same, sound the same, um, offer the same experience you have when you were a child. Maybe, in fact, you only find love in relationships when there are arguments all the time, because when you were a child, that's the way your parents acted. You see the tie-in together? So, as an adult, you're making relationship choices based on what you did when you were a child. And I've talked about this many times before. It's in my book, it's in my coaching, it's in my work. And if you don't heal that, if you don't, fa if you don't face those things from your childhood, it's going to keep playing in your adult life. Good luck with that if you don't. So, relationships and arguments can have a different way of relating. As I said, from my experience, relationships and arguments didn't even go together, period. There was no place for them because of the way I was raised. So, if you're in a relationship that was very volatile, or excuse me, if you're in a family as a child that was very volatile, your adult relationships could also be very volatile because it would feel familiar because that's why we have love tied together with relationships is tied through volatility. So having arguments as an adult may be what gives you the feeling of like, oh great, we're arguing, we must be in love. You know, that wiring could be running because you were a child that way. Again, different ch childhoods create different results as an adult in your relationship choices. So that's, that's the two extremes. So you've got the framing for that. In between that are people who had a generally average upbringing around arguments and their adult life, they have relationships, but there's still a variation of how many arguments they get into. So here's the way to win about winning your arguments. Sorry, here's the way to win in your relationship arguments because this is the question I put out at the beginning and I'll give you some clues. Obviously the first, well, obviously to me, maybe, in, maybe it was to you. Obviously the best way to win an argument in a relationship is not to have one. It's simply to not get that far. Because for many of us, we aren't the most aware, conscious people to go, oh, I feel something's offline here. Let me talk about it clearly first. So that way I won't get into an argument about it. Some people have that skill. Some people don't. But here's a way to start planting the seeds ahead and do it the right way. When you feel out of alignment in your relationship, and I'm, using, I'm using safe words in a sense, not using like when you're pissed off and you're upset, when you feel something in alignment, because it could happen before that, you may be just feeling like something's off between me and my partner, I'm not sure what it is. And then three or four days later, you're like really getting like, I'm getting upset, I'm getting frustrated, and, really, and, and, it's, and this is not even going on consciously. You're feeling viscerally, just getting like rrr, 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 upset feelings. And it's nothing to do with really what's going on. It's actually tied into your history. But that, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's the advanced class. I'll we'll come back to that one again later on, because there's another level of this I haven't talked about. When you are aware of the upset brewing, and this is the thing, this is the advanced student type thing. When you're upset, when you're aware of the upset brewing, you can get ahead of it. Yes, you can get ahead of it. Because if you notice it, key, when you notice it, you can do something about it. So if you get upset about something your partner's doing or not doing, or what, something about your partner you're feeling upset about, you can get ahead of it and either one, talk about it with yourself to go, okay, what's triggering me? Why am I upset? What's, what's, what's brewing about it? Oh, because you left the toothpaste off the toothpaste cap, the toothpaste cap off the tube for the last three weeks, or whatever it is. And when you realize what it is, nine times out of ten, you go, oh, pff, there's nothing to be worried about. I can let it go. That's one option. Second option is if you become aware, oh, she's been doing this again and again, and it's frustrating me. Like she's been stamping around the house. She's upset about something. It's bugging me. It's pissing me off. Noticing that it's her up, and I'm speaking from the male to female perspective, but you understand it works both sides. The other perspective would go, you know what, let me ask her, let me sit down and talk with her and say, look, honey, I'm noticing you're very upset lately. I've been feeling you walking around. Excuse me, that was bad framing. Let me try that one again, because I said that one incorrectly. <laughs> that, that was the old way of doing it, which is to go, you're wrong. And I said, no, 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 we won't. This, this is, by the way, this is a framing thing I'm giving you here, so watch how I'm saying this. So you'd go up to her, for example, with males and a woman, and go, honey, I'm noticing something, something's off. I can feel it. You know, I, I mean, you'd be slamming doors, lady. Something up, something going on. And she may say no initially, but if you ask again, it's like you know, I'm noticing it's bugging me now. I'm getting a bit frustrated by what's happening. I don't want to get upset. Can we talk about this? Now, that isn't perfect language, but you get the understanding of where you're coming from. Is a place where you're asking questions and being invitational to let the other person break down their barrier to talk to you. Now, what I said before about uh, not framing it very well is when you start accusing the other person of being wrong. That's not a way to win our arguments. So for example, what I said earlier about, you want to say, you seem upset. You may not be upset. Or saying that you're, you know, you're putting, putting the weight on the person because you're getting in the place of judging them 
and they're taking that on top of what was already upsetting them. If they are upset by judging them, you aren't helping anything. That's why, why again, not having arguments wins in the sense of doing this. There's, so I'm, I'm making sure I cover all the bases on this conversation. When you're in an argument, this is the piece I want to talk about. One of the best keys you can have to have an argument that works, as much as it sounds crazy, is to have two intentions. One intention is to own your place in the argument. And I mean this very clearly, and I'll explain what that means in a second. Secondly, is to have a positive, constructive outcome from the argument. Because most people go into an argument with no clue, they're just going to argue until they win. That's not what I mean. The positive construction outcome from the argument could be of a better understanding of each other. It could be there's a problem that's been going on, you need to resolve it in a way that works for both of you. That's a higher intention, a positive intention. What I mean by ownership is when you're in an argument about something, you speak from your own feelings. So if what they what, if they piss you off, that's not true. What they did pissed you off. Key difference. So again, it's not what they it's not they didn't piss you off. It's what they did that pissed you off. That separation and understanding starts to put a gap between you and the other person that's not about upset. What happened, the actions, the things that happened between you got you upset. You still love the other person, I trust. If you don't, then maybe that's the end of the relationship. But if you are willing to see the separation of the behavior from the person, you can do something about it. This is the big, this is the, this is, this is the, um, the grown up work. This is the, you know, putting the, the big boy and big girl panties on, as it were to really do this work deeply because this is something that a lot of people don't do in relationships. They hold grudges, they get upset, they sulk, they walk away from each other, they leave, they cheat, they do other things because they're not willing to have an adult, honest, upset argument to resolve things. And I'm not an expert on, the, on this one actually doing these ones because I still have my own childhood wounds that I'm healing around this, so just to be clear. So arguments are challenging for a lot of people because a lot of people when they're arguing they shut down their ability to communicate clearly. They become just becomes visceral. So you can remember those two things first. That'll give you a head start, which is one again to have a positive, constructive goal for the argument's completion. Where when you do finish the argument, you come out better than you started for both of you, both of you, not just you. And secondly, you have ownership, meaning that when you speak to the other person, you're saying, you know, when you lift the cap of the toothpaste, I start to get really upset because I have, I have this thing about being neat and tidy, and it really triggers me. That instead of saying. You should have put the cap on the toothpaste because that doesn't help anybody. But you understand the difference there. So, so I'm throwing some things out there for you to give us some thought about when, you're in a, when an argument shows up, can you be present enough and aware enough to respond to it from a different place? Can you be aware enough and be open enough to actually take the conversation to a deeper level? Because the other part of it is it, and this is, this is another one that a friend of mine know from years and years ago said this one. He said, uh, actually no, she said, because it's husband and wife, she had a secret weapon in their arguments that would always make sure she would win <laughs> this one you can play with this is this is one's a dangerous one to play with but the thing about this one is it's it's for people who really really have done the work because you can't just do this flippantly because it doesn't mean anything otherwise but basically what would happen is they would get into an argument she would get an argument with the husband and they'd be getting into an argument but left and right this and that and this and that and then at some point in time she would feel it inside and she knew she could do it she would basically go you know, she'd be in the middle of like, this and this and this and this and this and this and one more thing. I love you. And it was like, boom, blew the argument wide open. Because if you really are loving your partner, an argument is centered around something you care about. Because it's really hard to get pissed off about things you don't care about. By caring, you have an investment. Caring is tied to love. When you can get back to the love, you can resolve the upset from a place of caring. And you can actually can transform your conversation. So that secret weapon she had, you can try it on for size if you want. It's not something that's easy. It does require a commitment to both partners to know that going in. And, if you, and by the way, this is another thing I would say. If you want to use that, make sure before the argument started, like months before, you told each other that when an argument happens, you want to have an, the, um, the get out of jail free card in a way, the get out of, the get out of hell free, free card, which is to use the I love you card. That's, that's a secret weapon you can use. So I hope this has given you some insights. These are just brief, t I mean, it's only a 15, 20 minute talk about arguments and relationships, and there are different ways to do it. I've given you three or four ideas, and I hope these will be of value to you, because they're part of life. Having differences of opinion and discord, if your life, if relationships don't have any upset in them at all, I'd be concerned. Because for most people, there's personalities that do have friction and, and abrasiveness between each other, which is why arguments happen. 
So you've got to be willing to work through them to the other side so you can love deeper and deeper and deeper. That's the big work. So I hope this has made sense to you. Again, childhood patterns can come childhood patterns can come into play, but also adult relationship challenges can make things difficult for you to communicate clearly. But I want to say the one thing again about ownership. When you really do own your space of relationship, you don't argue to beat the other person up. You argue to be clear, different direction. Again, goals in your in your arguments, intentions in your arguments towards constructive completion is the way you want to focus. So if your argument intention is to be heard and to be clear and to be loving. See all these things you can stack on the deck? It changes the whole personality of the argument. Keep your thoughts in mind next time you get into one of those. In fact, if you're looking in a relationship you're already in, that you don't down the road you know there might be one, or just to be planned ahead, have some of these pre argument conversations. By communicating clearly ahead of time, you set up some premises and framework that make the argument much easier to manage, easier to resolve and even possibly even easier to avoid because you communicate up front. That'll keep you busy. <laughs> so with that, I'll thank you for watching. Um, that, that's, that's about it for this one. By the way, quick things. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. And if you want to share this with any of your friends, please feel, feel free to do so. This is Facebook Live. Um, so I do it first. It does go onto my YouTube channel afterwards and onto my podcast. I'll give you the links to those in a second. Um, and I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time in case you haven't seen me before. You haven't seen me before? How dare you? Um, <laughs> being watching broadcast 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. This is number 512. And this is, um, so again, it's my Facebook Live. You watch it on um, my YouTube channel and also on podcast. I'll give you the links for those as I'm signing off. Hi, Beth. Nice to see you. Aren't you doing your event this weekend? <laughs> nice to see you for a second. Um, so, replays. On my Facebook business page, on Barry Selby, the author, you can watch it there, and also my YouTube channel, which is all my social media is my name, which is Barry Selby. So the channel is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages from the Masculine, which I'm all on there. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also on the podcast, I'm loading up there, and that is also Messages from the Masculine, the podcast title. And you can subscribe and download my broadcast there, um, in case you want to listen when you're driving or somewhere else you're not watching the visual broadcast. With that, I thank you for watching. Um, if you want to find out more about me, message me, I'll tell you where I'm, what I'm up to. If any questions or comments about this broadcast, please put them below in the comments. I will respond afterwards. Um, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook. And uh, learn how to win your arguments. I think that might help you. So once again, thanks for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. And again, same time tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care. Bye.